Well, first things first, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, always invest in your company first. That pays me definitely 100% way better returns than anything because I can control it. Welcome to the stage, Nicholas Fairley. How do I start to try? What can I do? What's the next thing I can do? Most unselfish thing a person could do is expand. No other option besides hard work. How they can live this three dimensional lifestyle. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Billion Dollar Brotherhood Show. No matter what platform you're on right now, you're going to want to go hit that subscribe button, especially if you're new. Now, if you're coming back and just randomly clicking on episodes and you have not subscribed yet, I don't know what to tell you. Turn on those push notifications and usually that's in YouTube. There's a little tiny bell. You can get notifications when new episodes go out. So they pop up and you get them right away and you can respond. You can check things out and you can get the best information on the planet for businessmen like you and I from trainings to Q and a, where you can actually join our Facebook group called the billion dollar brotherhood on Facebook. We stream the Q and a live. We take questions right there and it's kind of like open coaching. My one-on-one coaching is over $150,000. Now I don't do a ton of it. We also have masterminds where people invest over $20,000 every year. And we do free Q and a where you can ask anything, get your questions answered inside of the Billion Dollar Brotherhood Facebook group. So go ahead and head over there. Say that you came from this show and you will get accepted and introduced to over 5,400 businessmen like you and I. Now, today's our interview day. So pumped. Just wrapped up with a great friend. He's now doing tens of millions, hundreds of million dollars real estate deals on top of being in the PC game for over 30 years from cloud storage to building computers to fixing iPhones with multiple in-store locations, physical locations, as well as doing things online and actually even built a computer for Steve Aoki. Welcome, Dan Young. Dude, welcome. I appreciate you being here. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me on, brother. Absolutely. We met on Clubhouse. I, I don't know. Are you still on the platform? Are you on there a lot still? Oh, uh, maybe once every week or something. Quick jump in, you know. Yeah, yeah, I I thought I was like telling people, man, this is super crazy. Like, I'm glad that we made the connection. And then I was like, dude, I have a one year old or 14 months, and and I'm like spending Sunday like on my phone for eight hours, and and it was wild. What's your thoughts on Clubhouse now that you've been you've done the jump in? I saw you on there a lot. Now you're saying once a week. What's your thoughts on it now? I think the people who have risen, you know, cream of the crop over there, are going to do really well with that. Um, that are running consistent stuff. There are some people that seem like it's their full-time job just to be on Clubhouse and they don't really do any actual real deals in real life. So it'll be interesting to filter through the fakes and the real. Totally. And obviously you've been one of the reels for a long time now. I, you know, when I was three years old, you were putting out commercials, by the way, 1995, when I saw the commercial, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I didn't see it in real life cause I was three. Um, <laughs> but I just saw it on your Instagram, which is cool. And one of the biggest things that intrigues me is I'm, I'm about to go on my decade of owning a business and, and owning or, you know, having my sole income come from a business. And for you, like you've been doing this for decades and I've been through this ebb and flow of like my first failure when I was married and then getting punched in the face and like cleaning carpets for two and a half years to then going out there and building a business again. What's been something that you've done just to sustain yourself in that, that hunger and that excitement of just being an entrepreneur and building businesses and going after new things without just feeling overwhelmed or burnt out all the time? It's just chunking down your time, you know, I mean, as entrepreneur, most entrepreneurs have a little bit of ADD and you got all these different ideas and you want to do everything. And if you try to do everything, you kind of suck at everything. Right. So what you want to do is do a brain dump, write down all your thoughts and ideas and then put the letter A by the ones that really move the needle, B that are mediocre, C that are crap. Then number your A's from one to, let's say one to 10 or however you got, and then schedule that execution. I mean, that's clear goal setting and time management, man, critical. Yeah, and you've been in the tech industry for a long time. I feel that people sometimes miss, I was literally just on the phone with someone who was begging for a graphics card for me to ask you for a graphics card. And I was like, man, like, how do I tap into this? Like you own like kind of like a gaming, a gaming computer company, but I'm sure that stems into eSports. I saw your guys' logo and a big eSports like conference get together, all these things. And over the last few months I've been looking into, cause I grew up playing games and like doing all this stuff. And during quarantine, I started playing some games with friends again, entrepreneurs. And I'm thinking, how do I 
own these teams, like how are they getting so many eyeballs? People are having 50, 60, 100,000 people watch them live at one point, like at any given time. For you, like one, how did you enter the industry? And how do you kind of see it evolving so that we don't look at this industry like people did with Bitcoin, where they're starting to get in at 50,000 rather than 500 or $50? Kind of yeah. show me the progression of where you came from and where it's going. Well, we've built computers for over 30 years and uh, people started using computers for content creation, right? So they moved from purely business application to content creation video. Before video was filmed with just like tape, right? Cut, splice, really manual stuff. But computing changed that. So we've just been there along the journey. And as companies have evolved that we work with, um, their needs evolved. And they're like, hey, we're starting this division. We're doing everything digital. Can you build us computers? And then they start pumping out movies, video games, military projects, medical. And so just uh, being there through the whole journey for the last few decades really is just time. Um, all the interns, you know, 10, 20 years ago when they were brand new, fresh out of college working, at, let's say, Intel or Microsoft or NVIDIA, um, they were like interfacing with me. I was super young too, you know, and they're like, hey, let's let's make the executives really happy. So we would build cool stuff for them. And then now these interns are now the vice presidents and CEOs of these Fortune 500 companies. So we've, we've built a decades long relationship and they know I've got their back and and they're always in me business too. So it's been really cool, you know. What, was that an expertise of yours though? Because uh, obviously you're not there building computers all day, right? Like you're building teams, like you're running big companies. There's too many moving parts for you to be the actual person. At first though, were you the guy that was like just into it, smart with technology and it kind of progressed from there? Cause some people never make it past there. You could still be yeah. working at a company right now, um, but how did it start for you? What was the skill set? So Kennedy, what was it? Playing video games. So when I was little, played video games in the 1970s, like really simple stuff, right? Learned how to code, started hanging around a bunch of computer nerds, right? Came to Utah, you know, built my company here, hired a bunch of people. And then the big thing, the big catalyst when you're going from like making a hundred grand to millions and millions is, is really bringing good talent. So, you know, I started hiring leaders in our organization that were so good I would work for, right? And and all of them have to have three traits, integrity, energy, and intelligence. If they've got those three traits, good to go. If they're missing any of those, no go, you know? And that's how we scaled. Now we have entrepreneurs. So I'm like, it's like a micro shark tank. So we have all these different companies, five more than five now. And I have leaders running the individual organizations and then they recruit in people like them with those traits. And then that's how you scale. And it's, and they're all branches, right? All five of these companies are in your expertise. I saw like a cloud-based storage company, a uh, company that's like around PC repair, iPhone repair, all that stuff. And then also building custom things is to kind of walk us through how you built these branches. Cause a lot of people have one solo company and they're not building these branches or divisions. Tell me how you came up with that and how you kind of built the systems around how to do more without just putting more on your plate. So really is what your core competency is, you know? So let's say you sell insurance or real estate. Let's just take something totally unrelated to our industry. Well, what you need to do is identify some of the customer's problems that they have. And so for example, I spend probably half my time doing real estate development now, not just tech, right? So uh, I figured, well, okay. So we've got people who need tech space that want to move out of California. Hmm. Let me find some crappy buildings, make them nice and put friends in those buildings so that they're paying us rent and save them time. What's their biggest thing in tech time? So I'm like, let me just pre-build the buildings for them to their specifications, have them sign agreements, right? Um, then I'm thinking, hmm, maybe uh, they need insurance. Okay, if they need insurance, then I'll find some friends who have great insurance companies and then have them go and they split the commission with me when they insure my friends that come in and the insurance pricing, I'm like, you gotta give my friends really good prices or they're gonna not like any of us. So they're like, okay, yeah, good service, good prices, right? That's how it came to with software, you know, for our hardware business, video game studios, military, medical, you, you identify underlying connecting opportunities within whatever you're doing. Problem that people have is, for example, they start an ice cream shop and they think, all I'm gonna do is sell ice cream cones, right? 
But what if they had like ice cream cone of the month subscription package, right? Like people could come in and get discount. Um, what if they had some affiliates? What if they had some more collabs with uh, influencers, right? Uh, pitch the ice cream. Maybe they have ice cream that gets shipped nitrogen frozen by a subscription over the internet. Like you got to add and progress um, to what the changing times are, but don't murder your fundamentals. If the fundamentals are profitable, like we still fix cell phones, man. We still build normal PCs for offices, like a, like a, like a chiropractor office. We still do that, but yet we're doing all the added services as well. So it's just add-ons, basic sales. Yes, I'm picking up like the connections that you've had to other industries and building partnerships with them. And then you also gave some tips for some of the businesses out there that are selling ice cream only and they're not building in a subscription model they're not looking at lifetime value of a customer getting them to come back over and over again my haircut guy the dude lets me buy six haircuts in a row and i get one free i'm like dude i'll i'll pay up front right now and even if i move or whatever you get to keep that money but like what did dude what happened is that i actually came in every 13 days i used to mm -hmm. kind of push it out an extra week because i every time i had to bring my card and i had to swipe it now it felt like i got free haircuts every time I was stopping by there all, whenever. Come in, clean it. me up. So uh, I think it's an awesome perspective. I want to hit on that just so that the people take it away, as well as uh, like you were talking about with creating these strategic partnerships or influencers or using your network to figure out what these other people are buying. My favorite part that you just talked about, though, is that you're looking at what people's needs are or their wants already. And then you're just going out there and, and creating that perfect product. And it's almost irresistible, right? They're like, oh, why wouldn't I move into this place? Because this is, fits me like a glove. It's already a tailored suit because you got their measurements already before they even walked into the shop. Yeah. So There's I think that's question. freaking phenomenal. You just ask people, man, what are you working on and how can I help you? Or what's the biggest challenge you have right now, bro? Like, what are you struggling with? And then find their answer. If you find their answer, they'll give you money. As simple as that. Find pains, offer uh, solutions to their problems. It's really easy. So you still game to this day? A little bit of Call of Duty. Um, I'm trying to drag. I got to drag. We did that computer for Steve Aoki, super good friend of mine, and uh, trying to get him on with some NFL and some NBA players. We do a big charity fundraiser um, to help give back a little bit more because you know a lot of us we're coming out of everything. COVID's coming out. You know we're on the probably on the out, hopefully. And everybody just wants to get back out there and help all the good causes and, and do shows and do all those things as they come up. So what better way to get word out than through, you know, gaming and social media, right? And have you seen like crazy people play Call of Duty? I saw Marshmello and his manager and all of them. They're out there and they're like, they're pretty good. At, I mean, I think they're really good at playing. Uh, one of my great friends who runs the fourth fastest growing company in America, He's super good at Call of Duty. Like, tell me some of the who are the successful people you know that are playing Call of Duty? Just because people think it, it was almost like skateboarding. I remember people saying skateboarding it'll go nowhere, and now there's people in X Games and earning a career from doing something that seems insignificant. Gaming was the same. Yeah. It's like yeah. you're gonna rot your brain. You're an idiot. Now you got people with sixty thousand subscribers paying them monthly to sit there and play a game in front of a mm -hmm. computer screen. Yeah, people you've seen that actually play games. Yeah, well, Steve Aoki is an example. He plays games all the time, and he even posts little clips from it on his social. Uh, a lot of musicians playing them, tons of uh, football players, um, Bronson, Kafusi, uh, Green Bay Packers. Now he's playing for one of the other teams. Uh, local guy here, he plays. All his brothers play. They bring all the other NFL players in. They drag Ninja Jock jumped in on his brother's stream, and, you know, it's like, I mean, Everybody, because gaming, you know, brings everyone together. Everyone wants to play, and you know, I mean, they just want to have fun. It's like a bunch of kids in the schoolyard, you know, playing deep basketball. But you can do it during quarantine or any time, you know. You know, and it doesn't matter geographically. You know, there's no borders around the world. People that come together and play ball, you know, or play Call of Duty. So they Duty. they heard it here first, though. This is like the 2021 networking strategy of the year. Is that I mean, I even did this. I had a friend that was like, it was $100,000 for a day if you wanted to shadow him in his office. And I and I found out he played a game. And I was like, wait, you're telling me I could build a PC and play this game and hang out with him every single, every time we play? And it's fun? It was, it was interesting. But yeah, we picked up Call of Duty, dude. So we'll have to Good. play, like saying it live <laughs> here. 
Boom, um, boom. <laughs> what, what's your KD, dude? You gonna share it with us like some of your stats or what? Uh, I'm terrible at Call of Duty. Um, I, I'm more like that guy who goes golfing and you know drives the car around like an idiot. Uh, but it's good time still with friends, you know. And uh, usually you got those those guys and girls that are really super pro, you know. We let them kind of take the lead and we just kind of go along for the ride, you know. So, uh, but it's still so great how, fun how, social how, stuff, you know. Totally. And how do you see it going? When when I was growing up, I, I raced motocross and I wanted to be a professional motocross racer. As I started growing a business, I thought maybe I'll start a team. And then as I started seeing the investment, the eyeballs, it's like, man, I don't know if this is really worth it. Then all of a sudden I'm looking at your stuff and I'm thinking, dude, I might need to build an e-sports team. And I just don't know the opportunities in the industry right now as a business owner that's not very technologically savvy or in there a lot. Where are the opportunities right now? Is it building a professional team and managing people? Is it building certain products like G Fuel? It's like energy drinks for, for kids who want to play games all night uh, in a layman's terms. Where, where are the opportunities right now? And is this a place that you're really spending your time focusing your, your time on? No, I support the guys who run that because I remember our core competency is hardware and uh, software security, right? Um, so that's that's our my core focus. If you follow friends like uh, Sean Durst, Space Station Gaming, awesome. Sean is good, clean, fun, and he's just killing it. Um, and there's a lot of other teams you can follow. But what I would look for is the ones who aren't just pure gaming, ones that have kind of mixed it into some of the other stuff they do. Like if you watch Honduras, what he does is um, he manages a lot of the, the brands for a lot of really big uh, photographers, videographers, things like that. Um, but they also game and do things like that too. So again, I think the opportunity, you know, a lot of the big, I mean, I guess someone could just say, hey, I want to start a team, was to get in with a hybrid model. I mean, that's really the key is to get in with a hybrid model. Because you stick all your eggs in one basket and you're competing with all the big boys and girls, you know, the likelihood of you being successful is low. But if you have something that's a little bit different, a little bit better, a little variant, um, then you stand out from the crowd and then you're the market you know, leader to start with that. And then everyone will want to copy you, but hopefully by the skill, you know? Totally. And going back to a little bit of the consistency, I'm, I'm very impressed by how you've just consistently moved up and continue to grow. Uh, even thinking about the businesses, you talked about being bad at college. People make fun of you because they may call you a boomer, right? It's like something a little kid would say. They call me a boomer, so don't worry. Gen like, Xer, oh, freaking bro. boomer, Gen which Xer. Gen X. Yeah, it, it, they call me a boomer, so that's what I'm uh, saying. That <laughs> no matter what, ultimately, what happens? Like my dad ran a business, and one of the hard things was consistently innovating because we get so used to what we grew up with that even kids my age, 28, 29 years old, they're thinking, oh, these. 17 years, they're so different. Like that, they, well, they're so stuck with Facebook because that's what we grew up with. And now they're not getting on different platforms because it's new and uncomfortable for them. How have you been able to stay consistent, continually growing, but also innovating where you're not stuck as the guy who just is knowing the same things? Does that make sense? Like you probably see a yeah, lot of these I'm, business owners yeah. that stick with the same crap forever and never innovate. How have you been able to balance that innovation with also the consistency? So it's the, and mentality versus I could choose this or that, right? So well, what you want to do is add to your portfolio, right? And that means some experimenting with different things. So if you have a base product that you sell or business that's that's ma making you good cash flow, right? You have to test new fields. And that's why you need three types of mentors, old dudes and girl, guys and girls, peer group and younger. And you got to meet with them on a weekly basis. Ask the young people, what's going on? What's hot and new? And what's kind of funny is like I was talking to my daughter. She's like, Dad, you know what's freaking cool you guys should do? NFT, non-fungible tokens, man. You move that because we have I have a collab that I'm an ambassador with that we do um, advisor for. That we, we have this crazy ICO thing that happened back in October. It's got up like 300%. It's crazy. Um, can't talk about someone now, but soon. But we're going to hybridize that with NFT. And, and help people help uh, influencers monetize. Like, okay, so there's two, there's a need, there's two different things. There's blockchain, there's NFT. How do you combine the whole ecosystem? I have my coders program all of it, plug that in, release it, and you know, we'll our team will do a hundred billion dollars in twelve months. So I mean, it's crazy, you know. I mean, but that's just 
one thing. People need to start simple. You know, so if it's carpet cleaning, it's funny because I sold carpet cleaning on the phone and I did carpet cleaning. So we're both carpet cleaners, right? And I remember my pitch was, hey, this is Dan from Century Carpet Cleaning. Hey, guess what, bro? Right now we'll do two rooms all the way, thirty-four ninety-five. We can be there tomorrow. Does that work for you? Morning, afternoon, right? Um, but then I started telling my boss there, hey, dude, what if you, this is way back, right, in the 80s. What What if we just started selling people like a prepaid carpet cleaning where they could get like a whole year of carpet cleaning and then they're already booked into the scheduler and they could just prepay and get 20% off. And so Scott's like, yeah, we could try that. So the dude does like, a thousand percent more revenue in three months, you know. <laughs> so you're like, it's freaking great, you know. And people still don't even do that. Like, I just called a carpet cleaner yesterday, and he's telling me, oh, "I'll do a couple of rooms for ninety nine bucks minimum." And I, I like, dude, the average person that I clean that does it often maybe spends two hundred, two hundred fifty dollars a year. If you charged them, if they told me for a thousand bucks the whole year, anytime we come out with spot removal, whatever. I guarantee I would never, most people would not book a thousand bucks well, think a year about worth we're, of carpet cleaning. Speaking stuff. of carpet cleaning, we're right in this. So so these carpet cleaning dudes and guys and girls need to do a subscription. But then they would sell us an add-on package. Right now we have a new chemical, make sure it works, right? And two things. One, will UV light your whole house to kill all current bacteria, service bacteria, and we'll use a chemical treatment. And we will come out four times a year to resanitize your house. Just in case it has COVID or some crazy infection, it doesn't jump on you as easy, right? So you can add that for only, you know, one ninety nine to any or whatever it is to any home. It's like okay, great. So so now you've differentiated yourself in the market, and you're rich, and you own that sanitizing market and carpet cleaning. Made it, you probably made an extra two million bucks a year, man, in one city. Duh. <laughs> it goes back to the quote of like unsuccessful people find an, ex, uh, an excuse for every single solution and other people, the successful people, they find a solution for every single problem. Like it, it's a difference in mindset. And I feel that for the people listening right now, the biggest thing is just to go do it mm -hmm. and not get overwhelmed with all the details. I work with dog trainers and lots of window washers and, and they always get up in, in their own head about what already isn't working. They want to stay comfortable in something that already they're upset about because it's not working for them. So you might as well try something new and don't listen to me, listen to him about it because he's not only done it, but he's produced millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars in success leaves clues. And the story, this is why I do the show. So after the money, people are making some money. Right now, I, I just posted, I said, this is the year not of expenses, but investments. I feel that, man, there's just a big hype on investments. What are some of the low risk to higher risk investments and, and splitting up the risk that you're taking your money and allocating it to? Well, first things first, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, always invest in your company first. That pays me definitely 100% way better returns than anything because I can control it, right? I know if I put a million in, two million will come out in a year. No brainer. So you maximize your input into your companies that have proven track record, right? Um, if you're just getting started, make sure you have profitability, right? And if you're doing a little marketing, let's say you're spending a hundred dollars and 150 is coming out after paying everybody, then double it, measure it, double it, measure it. Oh, it starts dropping Oh, scale back, figure out what's going on. Maybe you reach a saturation point. Usually not. Um, so that's the big thing. Um, so invest your own company. Second thing, um, stocks are a very good investment sometimes. But it's hard to predict, well, when is Tesla going to be up here, down here, or GameStop, or whatever, right? So what I like to do personally, and people need to talk to their own super professional stock advisor, financial planner guy, because I'm not, right? But what I do is I dollar cost average. I set aside a fixed dollar amount every month. I buy like 10 separate stocks I really like. I've done the research on, and I do that every month. I never go all in, and I never sell everything. So that's it. And then the, and the third one, obviously, is real estate. There's a real estate boom in certain states coming even more. So California, crap hole. New York, crap hole. Um, now, maybe a bargain once people realize it's a total crap hole and all the valuations have dropped significantly. But the influx states, Idaho, Utah, some parts of Florida. I mean, it's like the people at wherever the U-Haul truck is going. 
you know, where they're leaving from, that's where you probably don't want to buy. Where they're going, that's where the momentum is going. So that's, that's the three basic areas of wealth, I think. Yeah, I, I'm in Austin, Texas. We bought our home, man, like six months ago or so. And it's just been insane here. It's so crazy. Uh, and so even for the people that, I mean, my whole block is basically selling their house right now because they've owned their house for like 12 years. Obviously, that's not even a very great investment. A lot of people don't really care about where living in a house, whatever. Yet, just in the real estate boom that you're talking about, I feel that we're experiencing it here. And I also feel that this city is not even near its potential of growth, which is pretty wild. So, so mm -hmm. the three different areas that you just talked about, what I like the most is people always neglect themselves in their business, even though that's where they're going to have the highest rate of return. So that was number one for the people that are out there trying to throw $300 into freaking Bitcoin or GameStop, and they won't invest $300 into testing out new marketing for the thing that produced the money. You heard it from him, not me. Investing in the business is number one, especially if it's profitable. Uh, number two, you talked about different dollar cost averaging. Super cool. A lot of people have the lottery mindset. Like I'm going to go all in <laughs> and then they end up losing. And then that, that's why you're rich and a lot of people aren't. So listen to the rich guy. And, and the last thing, real estate, you said you spend about or invest about 50% of your time or half your time in real estate nowadays. What, what's been that transition? And, the, and then we'll wrap up. I sh it's interesting that you went, was real estate just appealing forever? Or did you just see a lot of that it's been around forever and it's safe and secure in some type of way? And what type of real estate are you in? So it's haphazard actually. So, you know, we have, a company called Zydex, X-I-D-A-X, that's online gaming. But we have physical brick and mortar stores called PC Laptops. We have nine of them from here to Las Vegas, Utah to Vegas. And some of the landlords there, I started getting friends with these guys. And they're usually, half of them are like old Greek dudes, right? And I'm like, so how much you buy this building for? And they're like, 100 grand. Will you sell it to me? They're like, yeah, a million dollars. And I'm like, well, how do you evaluate that? So they started teaching me, well, we go on cap rates, right? For a certain price that you buy or you have a certain amount of rent that comes in and your expenses and you just got to do the math so they taught me so i bought my first building like 30 years ago right and then i started renting to the other the other tenants were paying me rent and i'm like wait i'm making money on this and i bought this from this this awesome old greek dude who was retiring and he he he's taught me how to do this great let's replicate that so we started buying more and more real estate right then i'm like well how about single family homes, right? I mean, is that a good way to do it? And then some of these older mentors are like, hey, same principle. You know, if you can keep them rented out and you buy it for this much, what's your, your cap rate return? Cap on cap, that's the rule. Hmm. Then some mentors told me a few years ago, Dan, why do you keep doing these little crappy deals for like half a million, a million, two million? Why do you keep doing these, man? Why don't you go big? Why don't you just like $200 million deals or something stupid? And I'm like, because mm, it scares me. And they're like, it's just as much work to manage a $30 million project that it is to manage a $1 million project. And I'm like, huh, okay. So then I stuck my neck out, did a little bit bigger one, pretty good size, like a four acre deal, right? And uh, wow, we built this huge building, 50,000 square foot on this, tons of parking, put in like a coffee shop, Tesla chargers, all kinds of crazy stuff uh, being put in this one. And I was like, that was easy. And it was funny because I measured how much we were paying the bank. So we were paying the bank on this one, for example, 30000 a month to pay for the debt service, right? That's their mortgage payment on the building. But then my CPA, she's like, wow, your cash, you, you're bringing in almost $80,000 a month so in, in rents from the tenants. So you make 50000 a month doing nothing using the bank's money. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. this is great. So I'm like, well, why don't we do like $200 million of those right now. Like, why don't we do that? I'm like, well, my first, my wife is like, hey, uh, we don't have $200 million extra just sitting in our checking account because we got all this property. And I'm like, huh. So I just started talking to some buddies and I'm like, hey, tech buddies, get any extra money? Yeah, dude, I made 5 million this year. I'm like, hey, you wanna throw a million and like we can syndicate and do a couple deals? And they're like, dude, I love you. You can turn everything into gold, let's do it. And they still own half the deal, right? So you spread the risk out a little. And then you go bigger and bigger, and uh, that, that's the formula. Start small, get confidence, go big. But the biggest thing that I, the most important thing, I, th I had this epitome this morning is confidence. It's like, first I'm like, how could I have the courage to reach out to a guy like, for example, like Steve Ioki, or how could I reach out to these NFL football players and all that? 
Well, the thing that I realized is I'm a lot better than them at a lot of things. And they're way better than me at sports or music production. But when it comes to business or techie stuff, I'm probably stronger. So I can offer them value. And in exchange, you know, that's how we have it. So I mentor a bunch of like NFL players on how to invest their money. They make the choices, obviously. They have their teams. But I give them some ideas. And then... I said, well, they were like, how can we help you? Do I have to pay you? I'm like, no, nah, man, let's just network. So they're like, well, let me introduce you to 20 other NFL dudes who need some help. Okay. You know, that's how you build a network. It's free. Hey, Not that a lot was of fire. Money I appreciate it. You know? Yeah. Dude, you're on fire. I appreciate it. I want to honor your time. Thank you so much again, man. We met on Clubhouse, brought it here. You brought the fire, and I'm looking forward to connecting more. And maybe we'll have to go, you know, pew pew, shoot some people online as well. Best way to network 2021. Thank you so much again, man. Dude, hey. Remember, though, if you guys want to see what crazy stuff I'm working on, Dan's Millionaire Code on Instagram. Yeah, and to go subscribe to the podcast. Phenomenal. Super great. Guys, go check it out. And thanks so much again, dude. This was an awesome time. Thanks, man.